All right, kiddos. Today we're going to start talking about the periodic table. We've used it a lot this year, and hopefully in this next unit we'll be able to understand why it's arranged the way it is arranged. So we're going to begin with a little bit of history. Anton Lavoisier. He compiled a list of all the elements that were known at the time, and they are listed right here in your notes. Don't worry about memorizing that list at all. Just for your information, Anton Lavoisier is the first scientist that compiled a list of all of the known elements at his time. In 1864, an English chemist, John Newlands, proposed an organizational scheme for the elements. He noticed that when the elements were arranged by increasing atomic mass, he used atomic mass kiddos, their properties repeated every eighth element. Interesting. Their properties, their chemical and their physical properties began to repeat every eighth element. We'll see what that means in just a little bit. A pattern such as this is called periodic because it repeats in a specific manner. Newlands named the periodic relationship that he observed in chemical properties the law of octaves, obviously because every eighth element the pattern repeated. Um, also after the musical octave in which notes repeat every eighth tone. In 1869, German chemist uh, Lothar Meyer and Russian chemist Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev each demonstrated a connection between atomic mass, again, and the properties of the elements. Mendeleev, however, is generally given more credit than Mayer because he published his organizational scheme first. Like Newland several years earlier, Mendeleev noticed that when the elements were ordered by increasing atomic mass, there was a periodic property or pattern in their properties. By arranging the elements in order of increasing atomic mass into columns with similar properties, Mendeleev organized the elements into a periodic table. This doesn't look like today's periodic table, but you can see some resemblance. See on this first row we have hydrogen and lithium and sodium and potassium, rubidium and cesium. Take a look at our periodic table. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. And you can see in the second row we have beryllium, magnesium, calcium, and then it gets a little bit shady with bromine and barium, but there are many similarities. By noting trends in their properties of known elements, he was able to predict the properties of yet to be discovered elements. And he actually left blanks, open spaces, on his periodic table for these elements. They were the elements a scandium, which was discovered after Mendeleev's periodic table, of course, gallium, and germanium. Years after his periodic table, these elements were discovered, and their properties were analyzed, and they fit in uh, the periodic table exactly where Mendeleev had predicted them to fit, and that gave his periodic table tremendous credibility. Now, after new elements were discovered and atomic masses were calculated more accurately, it was determined that a few of Mendeleev's elements were placed in an incorrect order. In 1930, an English chemist, Henry Mosley, discovered that atoms of each element contain a u unique number of protons, kiddos. We know that, don't we? In their nuclei. Recall that the number of protons in the nucleus tells us the um, atom's atomic number. So instead of arranging them according to increasing atomic mass, we arrange them now in order of increasing atomic number. And then the few inaccuracies in Mendeleev's original periodic table ended up disappearing. So we have what's called the periodic law. And I'm going to write that in your notes for you, and you should write it in your notes, okay? The periodic law is physical and chemical properties of the elements um, exhibit a periodic and periodic simply means cyclic or cyclical a periodic pattern 
when they are arranged according to increasing atomic number. So not atomic mass, but atomic number. So when we arrange them in order of increasing atomic number, we end up seeing a repeating pattern of both their physical and their chemical properties. And here we have a version of today's modern day periodic table. Now, we're going to do a little bit of review from the last unit. Um, we're going to do some simple things. We're going to draw a line that separates the metals from the nonmetals. In fact, why don't you go ahead and do that now while I'm talking. Uh, we're going to number the groups and the periods. And then we're going to identify the groups uh, where the alkali metals belong, alkali earth metals, excuse me. Actually, this should say alkali metals. Alkali earth metals, halogens, noble gases, transition, and inner transition metals. Okay, so go ahead and why don't you take a minute, draw a line separating the metals from the nonmetals, and then number your groups and periods. After you're done with that, come back. We'll see if your arrangement matches mine. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and we'll separate the metals from the nonmetals. Um, I'll use this little highlighter here. Remember, if we start a line right beneath boron, do a little staircase down all the way to the bottom of the periodic table. Boom, we end up with something that looks like that. And remember, uh, the elements to the right of that line are the metals, or excuse me, non-metals. And the elements to the left of that line are the metals. Of course, hydrogen belongs over here on the non-metal side. We call that a non-metal. Now, of course, those that are on the staircase for the most part, are called metalloids. They have properties of both metals and nonmetals. All right, did you number the groups and the periods? All right, let's go ahead and number the groups. Let's change colors here. Uh, this is group one, then two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. Those are our groups and our periods. Let's go ahead and number those in green. We have period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Remember these two belong in uh, group or period 6 and 7. Okay? All right, good. Now, what groups do the following elements belong to? Do you remember where the alkali metals belong? Now, if you said group one, good job. They are the metals in group one. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. And the alkaline earth metals are the elements in group number two. They would be beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. How about the halogens? Yeah, they are group 17. So we have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine would be our halogens. And the noble gases, they are found in group 18. So we have helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Those are our noble gases. Transition metals, um, those are our D block elements. So let's go ahead and highlight those in just a different color. Okay, I think we had that in blue before. So these guys here are our D-block elements. We call them the transition metals. So that would be groups numbers number 3 through 12. So groups 3 through 12. And then the inner transition metals, folks, those would be these elements that are right here on the periodic table. They fit in these two um, squares right here on the periodic table. So the tra inner transition metals would, would include the lanthanide series, which are atomic numbers. Let me erase that. Atomic number 57 through 70. Those are called the lanthanides. And 89 through 102. And those are called the actinides. And those would be the inner 
transition metals. Okay, so just a little bit of review there, I hope, for you. All right, let's do a little bit more on this video. Let's define periodic property. We've defined the periodic law. The definition for periodic property is similar. This is properties of an element that can be predicted <clears throat> based upon their position on the periodic table. So properties of an element that can be predicted simply based upon their position on the periodic table. So for instance, let's take a look at the alkali metals. Now remember, the alkali metals would be the alkali metals or the metals in group one of the periodic table. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Now we don't know a whole lot about the element francium for reasons we're not going to get into right now. So we'll focus on lithium through cesium. And we can see their melting points, their boiling points, and their radius. Now, let's say that we did not know the melting point for potassium. Let's say that this number, uh, we didn't know that. But we wanted to, pre to predict that melting point. Well, take a look at the data here. Do you notice the melting point of lithium, then to sodium, then the rubidium and cesium slowly goes down? Can't you imagine that potassium's melting point would be somewhere between sodium and rubidium's? And you would be correct. We can do the same thing with the boiling point. Let's say for some reason we didn't know the boiling point of potassium. But notice when I go from lithium to sodium to rubidium to cesium, the boiling point slowly gets lower. So can't you imagine potassium's being somewhere between the boiling point for sodium and rubidium? and you would be correct. And the same thing is true for the atomic radius. If we didn't know the radius of potassium, you notice that when I go down the group from lithium to sodium to rubidium to cesium, the radius gradually increases. And so you would expect potassium's radius to be between sodiums and rubidiums, and you would be correct. Okay, now do you think we can gather similar data for other groups? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. And it's not just those properties that we saw up here. There are many other properties that we can determine based upon the element's position on the periodic table. And that, of course, is called a periodic property. So we're going to spend the next a little while talking about a few of these periodic properties. We'll talk about atomic radius when we see each other next. So take a look at your notes and see if you can see uh, properties related to atomic radius based simply upon the position of the element on the periodic table when you go down a group and also when you go across a period. Yeah, see if you can figure that out before we see each other next. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.